The Hurrans also called Hari, Kurites, Awari, Churi, Hurra or Hurrita were a people of the Bronze Age Near East. They spoke a huro eurasian language called Hurin, and lived in Anatolia and northern Mesopotamia. The largest and most influential Hurin nation was the multi-ethnic kingdom of Mitanni. The Mitanni perhaps being Indo-European speakers who formed a ruling class over the Hurins. The population of the Indo-European speaking Hittite Empire in Anatolia included a large population of Hurins, and there is significant Hurin influence in Hittite mythology. By the early Iron Age, the Hurins had been assimilated with other peoples, except perhaps in the kingdom of Urartu, according to a hypothesis by I. M. Diakon S. Starstein, the Hurin and Eurasian languages are related to the Northeast Caucasian languages. Language The Hurin spoke an ergative agglutinative language conventionally called Hurin, which is unrelated to neighboring Semitic or Indo-European languages, and may have been a language isolate. The Iron Age Eurasian language is closely related to or a direct descendant of Hurin. Several notable Russian linguists, such as S. A. Starstein and V. V. Ivanov, have claimed that Hurin and Hattic were related to the Northeast Caucasian languages. From the 21st century BC to the late 18th century BC, Assyria controlled colonies in Anatolia, and the Hurrins, like the Hattians, adopted the Assyrian Akkadian cuneiform script for their own language about 2000 BCE. Texts in the Hurin language and cuneiform have been found at Hattusa, Ugarit, as well as in one of the longest of the Amarna letters. Written by King Tushrata of Mitanni to Pharaoh Amenhotep III, it was the only long Hurin text known until a multi-tablet collection of literature in Hurin with a Hittite translation was discovered at Hattusa, in 1983. History Middle Bronze Age Hurin names occur sporadically in northwestern Mesopotamia and the area of Kirkuk in modern Iraq by the Middle Bronze Age. Their presence was attested at Nuzi, Urkesh and other sites. They eventually infiltrated and occupied a broad arc of fertile farmland stretching from the Kabur River Valley in the west to the foothills of the Zagros Mountains in the east. I.J. Gelbandi, A. Spizer believe these Semitic-speaking Assyrians, Subarians had been the linguistic and ethnic substratum of northern Mesopotamia since earliest times, while Hurrans were merely late arrivals. Urkesh the Kaba River Valley became the heart of the Hurin lands for a millennium. The first known Hurin kingdom emerged around the city of Urkesh during the 3rd millennium BCE. There is evidence that they were initially allied with the East Semitic Akkadian Empire of Mesopotamia, indicating they had a firm hold on the area by the reign of Naram Sin of Akkad. This region hosted other rich cultures. The city-state of Urkesh had some powerful neighbors. At some point in the early 2nd millennium BCE, the northwest Semitic-speaking Amorite kingdom of Mari to the south subdued Urkesh and made it a vassal state. In the continuous power struggles over Mesopotamia, another Amorite dynasty had usurped the throne of the old Assyrian Empire, which had controlled colonies in Hurin, Hattian and Hittite regions of eastern Anatolia since the 21st century BC. The Assyrians then made themselves masters over Mari and much of northeast Amuru in the late 19th and early 18th centuries BC. Shubatim Lil was made the capital of this old Assyrian Empire by Shamshirdad I at the expense of the earlier capital of Ashur. Yam had the Hurans also migrated further west in this period. By 1725 BCE they are found also in parts of northern Syria, such as Alaluk. The mixed Amorite Huron kingdom of Yamhad is recorded as struggling for this area with the early Hittite king Hattusilis I around 1600 BCE. Hurons also settled in the coastal region of Adania in the country of Kizuatna, southern Anatolia. Yam had eventually weakened vis-a-vis -vis the powerful Hittites, but this also opened Anatolia for Huron cultural influences. 
The Hittites were influenced by both the Huron and Hattian cultures over the course of several centuries. Late Bronze Age Mitanni the Indo-European Hittites continued expanding south after the defeat of Yamhud. The army of the Hittite king Mursili I made its way to Babylon and sacked the city. The destruction of the Babylonian kingdom, unambitious or isolationist kings in Assyria, as well as the destruction of the kingdom of Yamhud, helped the rise of another Huron dynasty. The first ruler was a legendary king called Kurta who founded the kingdom of Mitanni around 1500 BCE. Mitanni gradually grew from the region around the Kabur Valley and was perhaps the most powerful kingdom of the Near East in c. 1475-1365 BCE, after which it was eclipsed and eventually destroyed by the Middle Assyrian Empire. Some theonyms, proper names and other terminology of the Mitanni exhibit an Indo-Aryan superstrate, suggesting that an Indo-Aryan elite imposed itself over the Huron population in the course of the Indo-Aryan expansion. Arafa and other Huron kingdom also benefited from the demise of Babylonian power in the 16th century BCE. Hurons had inhabited the region northeast of the River Tigris, around the modern Kirkuk. This was the kingdom of Arafa. Excavations at Yorgantipa, ancient Nuzi, prove this to be one of the most important sites for our knowledge about the Hurons. Huron kings such as Ithi Teshupanithia ruled over Arafa, yet by the mid-15th century BCE they had become vassals of the great king of Mitanni. The kingdom of Arafa itself was destroyed by the Assyrians in the mid-14th century BC and thereafter became an Assyrian city. Bronze Age collapsed by the 13th century BC all of the Huron states had been vanquished by other peoples, with the Mitanni kingdom destroyed by Assyria, the heartlands of the Hurons, the Kaba River Valley and southeastern Anatolia became provinces of the Middle Assyrian Empire, which came to rule much of the Near East and Asia Minor. It is not clear what happened to these early Huron people at the end of the Bronze Age. Some scholars have suggested that Hurons lived on in the country of Neri north of Assyria during the early Iron Age. Before this too was conquered by Assyria. The Huron population of northern Syria in the following centuries seems to have given up their language in favor of the Assyrian dialect of Akkadian, and later Aramaic. Uratu, however, a power vacuum was to allow a new and powerful Huron state whose rulers spoke Urartian, similar to Old Huron, to arise. The Middle Assyrian Empire, after destroying the Huramitanni Empire, the Hittite Empire, defeating the Phrygians and Elamites, conquering Babylon, the Aramaeans of Syria, northern ancient Iran and Canaan and forcing the Egyptians out of much of the Near East, itself went into a century of relative decline from the latter part of the 11th century BC. The Eurasians were thus able to impose themselves around Lake Van and Mount Ararat, forming the powerful kingdom of Urartu. During the 11th and 10th centuries BC, the kingdom eventually encompassed a region stretching from the Caucasus Mountains in the north, to the borders of northern Assyria and northern ancient Iran in the south, and controlled much of eastern Anatolia. Assyria began to once more expand from circa 935 BC, and Urartu and Assyria became fierce rivals. Urartu successfully repelled Assyrian expansionism for a time, however from the 9th to 7th century BC it progressively lost territory to Assyria. It was to survive until the 7th century BCE, by which time it was conquered fully into the Neo-Assyrian Empire. The Assyrian Empire collapsed from 620 to 605 BCE, after a series of brutal internal civil wars weakened it to such an extent that a coalition of its former vassals, the Medes, Persians, Babylonians, Chaldeans, Scythians and Sumerians were able to attack and gradually destroy it. Urartu was ravaged by marauding Indo-European-speaking Scythian and Sumerian raiders during this time, with its vassal king vainly pleading with the beleaguered Assyrian king for help. 
After the fall of Assyria, Urartu came under the control of the Median Empire and then its successor Persian Empire during the 6th century BCE. During the late 6th century BCE a new wave of Indo-European speakers migrated over the Caucasus into Eurasian lands, these being the Armenians, and the region became part of the Armenian Orotu dynasty. The Hura Eurasians seem to have disappeared from history after this, almost certainly being absorbed into the Indo-European Armenian population, culture and society. Knowledge of Huron culture relies on archaeological excavations at sites such as Nuzi in Alalik as well as on cuneiform tablets, primarily from Hattusa, the capital of the Hittites, whose civilization was greatly influenced by the Hurons. Tablets from Nuzi, Alalik, and other cities with Huron populations reveal Huron cultural features even though they were written in Akkadian. Huron cylinder seals were carefully carved and often portrayed mythological motifs. They are a key to the understanding of Huron culture and history. Ceramic where the Hurons were masterful ceramists. Their pottery is commonly found in Mesopotamia and in the lands west of the Euphrates. It was highly valued in dust and Egypt. By the time of the New Kingdom, archaeologists used the terms Kaberware and Nuziware for two types of wheel-made pottery used by the Hurons. Kaberware is characterized by reddish painted lines with a geometric triangular pattern and dots, while Nuziware has very distinctive forms and are painted in brown or black. Metallurgy The Hurons had a reputation in metallurgy. The Sumerians borrowed their copper terminology from the Huron vocabulary. Copper was traded south to Mesopotamia from the highlands of Anatolia. The Kaber Valley had a central position in the metal trade, and copper, silver and even tin were accessible from the Huron-dominated countries Kizuatna and Ishua situated in the Anatolian highland. Gold was in short supply, and the Armana letters inform us that it was acquired from Egypt. Not many examples of Huron metalwork have survived, except from the later Urartu. Some small fine bronze lion figurines were discovered at Urkesh. The horse the Mitanni were closely associated with horses. The name of the country of Ishua, which might have had a substantial Huron population, meant horse land. A famous text discovered at Hattusa deals with the training of horses. The man who was responsible for the horse training was a Huron called Kikuli. The terminology used in connection with horses contains many Indo-Aryan loan words. Music among the Huron texts from Uguri to the oldest known instances of written music, dating from c. 1400 BCE. Amongst these fragments are found the names of four Huron composers, Tabsi Huni, Puhiya, Ahia, and Amya. Religion The Huron culture made a great impact on the religion of the Hittites. From the Huron cult center at Kamani in Kizuatna Huron religion spread to the Hittite people. Syncretism merged the old Hittite and Huron religions. Huron religion spread to Syria, where Baal became the counterpart of Teshub. The later kingdom of Urartu also venerated gods of Huron origin. The Huron religion, in different forms, influenced the entire ancient Near East, except ancient Egypt and southern Mesopotamia. The main gods in the Huron pantheon were Teshub, Teshup, the mighty weather god, Hebat, H-E-P-A, his wife, the mother goddess, regarded as the sun goddess among the Hittites. Drawn from the Sumerian goddess Kubau, known as Horwa, the biblical, also known as Eve amongst the Arameans and some others, Sharamar, or Saramar, Saramar, the sun, Kumabi, the ancient father of Teshub, his home is described in mythology as the city of Urkesh. Shawushka, or Shawushka, so Scar, was the Huron counterpart of Assyrian Ishtar and a goddess of fertility, war and healing. Shimaji, Simaji, the sun god. Kushu, Kuza, the moon god. Symbols of the sun and the crescent moon appear joined together in the Huron iconography. 
Nurgle, a Babylonian deity of the netherworld, whose Huron name is unknown. Each was also Babylonian in origin, and may have influenced Canaanite Hel, and also Yam, god of the sea and river. Huron cylinder seals often depict mythological creatures such as winged humans or animals, dragons and other monsters. The interpretation of these depictions of gods and demons is uncertain. They may have been both protective and evil spirits. Some is reminiscent of the Assyrian Sheju. The Huron gods do not appear to have had particular home temples, like in the Mesopotamian religion or ancient Egyptian religion. Some important cult centers were Kamani and Kizuatna, and Hittite Yazilakaya. Haran was at least later a religious center for the moon god, and Shaska had an important temple in Nineveh when the city was under Huron rule. A temple of Nurgle was built in Urkesh in the late 3rd millennium BCE. The town of Kahat was a religious center in the kingdom of Mitanni. The Huron myth, the songs of Elokumi, preserved among the Hittites, is a parallel to Hesiod's Theogony. The castration of Uranus by Cronus may be derived from the castration of Anu by Kumabi. While Zeus's overthrow of Cronus and Cronus's regurgitation of the swallowed gods is like the Huron myth of Teshub and Kumabi. It has been argued that the worship of Attis drew on Huron myth. The Phrygian goddess Sibyl would then be the counterpart of the Huron goddess Hebat. Urbanism The Huron urban culture was not represented by a large number of cities. Urkesh was the only Huron city in the 3rd millennium BCE. Although the site of Washukani, alleged to be at Telfakaria, is not known for certain. No tell in the Kaaba Valley much exceeds the size of one square kilometer, and the majority of sites are much smaller. The Huron urban culture appears to have been quite different from the centralized state administrations of Assyria and ancient Egypt. An explanation could be that the feudal organization of the Huron kingdoms did not allow large palace or temple estates to develop. Archaeology Huron settlements are distributed over three modern countries, Iraq, Syria and Turkey. The heart of the Huron world is dissected by the modern border between Syria and Turkey. Several sites are situated within the border zone, making access for re-excavations problematic. A threat to the ancient sites are the many dam projects in the Euphrates, Tigris and Kaaba valleys. Several rescue operations have already been undertaken when the construction of dams put entire river valleys under water. The first major excavations of Huron sites in Iraq and Syria began in the 1920s and 1930s. Recent excavations and surveys in progress are conducted by American, Belgian, Danish, Dutch, French, German and Italian teams of archaeologists, with international participants, in cooperation with the Syrian Department of Antiquities. The tells, or city mounds, often reveal a long occupation beginning in the Neolithic and ending in the Roman period or later. The characteristic horror and pottery, the Cabo Air, is helpful in determining the different strata of occupation within the mounds. The Huron settlements are usually identified from the Middle Bronze Age to the end of the Late Bronze Age, with Tel Mozan being the main exception. Important sites The list includes some important ancient sites from the area dominated by the Hurons. Excavation reports and images are found at the websites linked. As noted above, important discoveries of Huron culture and history were also made at Alalik, Armana, Hattusa and Ugarit, Tel Mozan, Jorgen Tipa, Tel Brak, Tel Lilan, Tel Bari, Tel Badar, Kenan Tipa, Tel Tuninia, Amel Mara, Tel Chuera, Hamam al Turkman, Tel Sabir Bayad, Hamouka, Shagar Bizar. Tel El Fakaria, Ras Eline, Tel Hamidia.